Yo, thanks for still tapping in at the commercial break, man. So we're kicking it with Promise. So uh, you just made me think about Cat Williams, man. You yeah. said you had to go outside the doors. So what do you think about this Cat Williams situation, man? Um, Virgo to Virgo, you know, yeah. to Virgo. If you I, didn't, I didn't watch the entire interview. I mean, like most people, I mean, he been trending like crazy. So, you know, we all seeing the clips and things like that. Um, I think Cat obviously is a talented comedian. He's put in the work over the years. And I learned in life, you can't tell nobody how to feel. Down. It's your boy, Sir Quinn, for Best of the Best TV, where we keep our eyes and our ears open for local, global, up and coming and established artists. Today, we got a multi talented comedian, radio host of 105.7, motivational speaker. Entrepreneurship is an understatement. Do not threaten to outgrind this man because I promise you it will not end well for you. Introduce yourself. Man, what's up, man? You know who it is and what it is, the one they call Promise, and I'm uh, super grateful for the to be here. Thanks for coming to the show, man. Yeah, how you, you feeling today, man? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. How you feel? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. So, uh, man, you've been working hard, right, man. Trying to, bro. Appreciate it. Hard, that. man. So, uh, first off, thanks for coming to the platform, man. Best of the best, where we target the best at their craft, and you clearly exude just that, man. Thank so, you. you've been a busy man. How you keeping up, man? How you doing this, man? Man, sometimes I just realize you got to be a little crazy to do, uh, some of the stuff that I want to do. You got to have an imagination like a child, you know what I mean? And um, just staying prayed up, um, trying to have a good circle around me, having a, a dope assistant and, you know, things like that help me keep balance. Man, so, so so tell us a little bit about what, you, what you're what you doing, man, because you don't shy away from the internet, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all public, but like, yeah. tell us a little bit about what you, what you got going on. Um, I mean, you know, the, most people would be familiar with me um, from radio. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much uh, the, the main thing that I do on a regular basis. So Monday through Friday, I host a morning show called The Morning Grind with Promise on High 105.7. Um, this is my third year doing that with the station. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that I, that's a priority for me daily to get up prior to the prep, prepare for the show, you know, to record, um, to do interviews, to, uh, you know, connect with the city, to keep them abreast on things that's going on, to entertain them, but also to inform them. Um, and also, you know, provide that soundtrack. People need some music to get them going through the day. So that's the main focus uh, on the day to day. Then in addition to that, you know what I'm saying? I also do a lot of hosting and emceeing. Um, so hold on, hold on, don't move too <laughs> fast, man. I did, I did ask you to say that, but yeah. uh, uh, I want to I smooth over into the improv, man. Yeah, We yeah. see you on improv. For sure. And, 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 improving, <laughs> if you will, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, uh, so what made you stumble over into like comedian? How did that start? The, the, com the comedic approach? Oh, the com man, yeah. the comedy, comedy thing is interesting. Um, I actually had no aspirations to be a comedian. Like that, that's nothing that was in my cards. It's nothing that I had plans on doing. Um, I guess I just always been a naturally silly, if anybody who know me personally, like always been naturally silly. You know what I'm saying? Um, people will say I'm funny, but as far as like getting on a stage and trying to make people laugh, that's a whole different task. So it wasn't something I was really looking to do. Um, I kind of stumbled upon it. Shout out to Marlon Hill, who was a legend from the city, uh, doing comedy and voiceover work and a lot of amazing things. Um, he's a big homie of mine. And uh, initially he had like some comedy rooms and I would just go to the shows, you know what I'm saying? Just watch the shows, watch him and other comedians just kind of kick it. And um, man, years ago, like uh, I got a chance to MC and host one of his. But again, I'm not a comedian. I'm just like, I could talk, talk in the mic, I could host, I could entertain people. Right. So I'm up there really just kind of free willing. I don't have no script, no jokes, no nothing, but right. I'm engaging with the audience. I'm making people laugh to the point where he would have me kind of come down and do it monthly. And then, you know, he was like, yo, I think you got, I think you got, you got some talent. Like, you could do comedy. I'm like, bro, I ain't got no jokes. But wow. I'm like, I'm scared I'm gonna get exposed up here. So Dion Cole is a comedian I enjoy. Dion Cole back in the day used to have a notebook. And he would go on stage and like yeah, try him off. Yeah. Yes, Lord. So I would watch him doing that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to like 
take some of that because I really didn't know how to write jokes. Right. So I used to have an actual big ass like composition <laughs> over it. You know what I'm saying? But reality, people didn't know. I would have premises wrote down on the paper because I didn't know how to write jokes. Right. So it might be a concept about grocery store, whatever. I would have it on stage and it, people would think it was a gimmick. But in reality, I didn't know how to write jokes. So I was just writing down things to kind of like and help you. You were improv yeah. off of that. Absolutely. Just give you the alley to yourself. Yeah. yeah. So I did that for a while. And then I was like, man, I'm going to get exposed. Like people are going to know I ain't really no comedian. And at the time, I was really trying to break into radio. So I told him, I'm like, big homie, I don't think like I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to go another path. So he was frustrated with me like, bro, you got so much raw talent. You could do this comedy thing. And I'm like, nah, I don't think it's me. You know, I'm like, I want to do radio. I want to do music. I want to do other stuff. Right. So I spent it. And fast forward all these years later, I had a conversation with him maybe like almost two years ago. And I was just like, bro, like, I'm like, I think I want to um, start doing like sketch comedy or like improv stuff. I'm right. like, I'm like, I think I could do Wild and Out. And he was like, you definitely could do Wild and Out. I said, so, but I'm like, I got to get this comedy bug right if I'm going to do Wild and Out because yeah. you got to be able to be quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you I said, let me ready. come get some work out with you because he had a new room. I yeah. said, let me just come down and like host or something like to kind of like just get my feet wet again. He like, all right, cool, no problem. But what he didn't know quietly is I had some ideas for skits and sketches, but I just converted them into actual jokes. Wow. So this time I had like quietly been kind of like putting stuff in my phone, recording stuff, writing stuff. And this stuff all out. came from your communication skills. We're going to touch on that <laughs> communication skills yeah. right after this commercial break. We're kicking it with Promise You, in case y'all just now tapping in. Y'all stay tapped in. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now available on Roku TV. Again, we are pleased to announce that we are on the A&R app on Roku TV. Make sure y'all go support. It's spelled T-H-E, capital A, lowercase a-n-d, uppercase r. No spaces. Please go check that out. Again, it's capital T, lowercase h-e uppercase a lowercase a n d uppercase r no spaces the a and r all one word thank you for your support go check that out yeah of the best entertainment Shh. shut up and hustle Yo, thanks for still tapping in after commercial break. We kicking it with promise. It's not a threat, damn it. You feel me? <laughs> but yeah, it, it all stemmed from communi communication skills. But we gonna keep keep, keep on track with what you're yeah. saying. So like, you went to school for communication. Absolutely. And tell us about that venture. Yeah. So I went to uh, Carroll University. Um, went to school for communications with an emphasis on PR, public relations. Mm -hmm. um, got a degree from there, and that's actually where I originally um, started radio. While I was at school, they had a co college radio station. And that's why I first got an interest in really trying to even do radio. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you was on V100 too, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you was on V100. <laughs> I remember that, man. Yeah, I remember uh, that. That really, that was like my first, if you will, want to call it like big break or whatever. But yeah, I was on the V for um, down there four years. Wow. So V100 was really how a lot of people got um, kind of wind of me from being over there. But even prior to that, like a lot of people don't know, like I was in radio before that. It's just the grind has been long. I wasn't really getting, it's like being a hooper. I was right. on the bench, I wasn't getting no tick. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, when I first yeah. got a radio, um, I actually interned at 98.3. Yeah. So when I was a young shorty, I was at Jamming 98.3 interning. And at the time they had another station there called Energy 106.9, which was a top 40 station. So that was my first actual opportunity to be on radio, but it was like, Overnights, so I used to be on the radio from like midnight to five in the morning. So you you ran from the question. We, what's the what's the in communications? Tell us about that journey too. I, I did ask the yeah. question too though, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, just I mean, I guess being in communication helps me be able to um, be in different rooms and navigate. You know what I'm saying? Like having that background with calm. It's nobody that I don't feel like I can't have a conversation with. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? It, it, it's giving me the ability to be able to have different. Um, relationships, networks, um, knowing how to be in different rooms, but always being myself, regardless of what room I'm in. Yeah, because um, it was a method to my madness, because I'm, I'm trying to transition back over to that comedy, yeah. too, man. So, uh, I mean, I think it all kind of... It coincides. Cor yeah, what, what, even without me really thinking about it, like, um, I, like, I always been good at speaking, so um, when I got ready to go to college, I didn't even know what I wanted to go to school for, and I actually met a... It was some Q dogs. Wow. Yeah, I was down at Tennessee State University. I was down there doing a college tour and I met some Q dogs. And um, they was like, young boy, what you want to do? What you want to go to school for? And I'm like, I don't know. 
So they're like, what, you know, what you like to do it or whatever. I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm good at talking. I'm good at communicating. Clearly. So they was like, man, you go to school for communications. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Right. So I remember coming back to the mill from leaving Nashville and telling my mom, like, y'all want to go to school for, for communications or whatever. So again, it still was so broad. Right. I had no idea what you could do with it. And Absolutely. then I found out you have different tiers. So um, my, my advisor ended up telling me to do PR, public relations. So um, yeah, that, that's how I got into that with college. But I guess now when you look back, all of those different things have, have bled over, you know what I mean? Right. For somebody who haven't been in school for communications, like, what's something that you always take, like, that always living back in your head that you li- that you bring into your day-to-day yeah. life, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, co- college ain't for everybody, you know? Like, I'm, I was blessed and fortunate enough to, to change my life because I wasn't always um, a productive young man. I wasn't always somebody who valued education or valued myself. Right. So thankfully, I was able to pivot and then go to school and actually be able to graduate and get my degree. But that's not for everybody. But right. communication is for everybody. Right. Whether you go to school for mm-hmm. it or not, there's not anything in life that you can do well without having a good form of communication. Roger whether that. it's business, whether it's parenting, whether it's dating, you know what I'm saying? Right. Interviewing. Like, you have to have a form of communication. Right. And if you don't have good communication, that's when a lot of things get mis- uh you have mis- mishaps, people get things misunderstood, you yeah. have conflict. So communicating is important regardless. Severed of me- relationships. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. regardless of me going to school for calm, I just always feel like it's important to have good communication regardless of if it's a major or if it's something that you're doing with school. But again, being in those classrooms, it just opened my mind to different things. You know, right. when you go to college, if you're fortunate, it's going to expand your thinking. Like yeah. coming from the north side of Milwaukee, I hadn't been exposed to certain things. So. Yeah. Going to Carroll University, that's one of the first times I was the only black person in the classroom. No, you know what I'm saying? Way, so bro. that helped open me up to different things. Like, okay, now I'm interacting with international students. Now right. I'm inter- interacting with white kids. Now I'm interacting with Latinos. Like, I'm in different rooms and in different circles. So it just helped me expand my mind and my thinking. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Open me up to different stuff. All right, let's, let's touch back on that improv because I want to move sure. over into the funny Sundays yeah. too, man, because... That's that's monstrous, man. Like that's crazy. So long story short, to chop it, basically that. from Marlon giving me that opportunity, yeah. I went down to kind of get some work. And again, like I said, he didn't know that I had secretly kind of been writing out ideas and stuff. So I went down to his room that he had, and um, I hosted, but I had material this time. And after the show was over, him and the other comedians was like, yo, who wrote I gotta that? I got shake up on that work ethic, bro, because <laughs> listen, bro, what? He came, what? Yeah, I can't prepare this Stay time. prepared, bro. What so, they say, stay ready till you, so you got to get, get ready. ready. <laughs> so he was like, yo, who, like, you know, they was like, who wrote that? Who wrote that? And I was like, me. And they're like, bro, you got jokes now? They're like, I thought you ain't no comedian. I'm like, man, I'm just fooling around. And that turned into um, doing a couple different months, going down to his room, doing some stuff. And people like, yo. And the crazy thing is, I had never seen myself, right? Mm-hmm. I had never had any footage or video of me doing stand-up, right? So one of the days I did his show, he had a girl who was working the door. I said, yo, can you do me a favor? I'm like, can you record when I go up? Mm-hmm. I said, I've never seen myself before. So I had never seen what, what other people could see. Yeah. She recorded it and went home and I looked at it and I was just like tripping because I had never seen myself yeah, in that yeah, light. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, damn, okay, I'm on stage. Like, like, can I really do, you know, like, can I really do this? Like, yeah. I know this, this room is laughing, but I'm like, is this something I could really maintain? Right. So, man, really at the beginning of, of 23, um, he had me do a couple different shows. You know what I'm saying? I did a couple different shows outside of his room. And I had a convo with him. I was just like, if I'm going to do this, I have to do it outside of you. And what I meant by that was he's like Jeez. a mentor, a big homie. The only time I had ever did comedy when I was in the comforts of his space. And I'm like, that's not going to tell me if I really can do this or not. Correct, correct. I have to go where I'm not comfortable. I got to yeah. go where you don't have a blessing or you don't can't control the room. Yes, Lord. And um, I went and branched out, and then that's when I created Funny on Sunday. I was like, uh-huh. I'm going to have to create something of my own. If Go ahead and get it, give a little minute to shout out that, uh, <laughs> where, where that's at and everything. Yeah, the funny but, on Sunday. So Funny on Sunday typically goes down the final Sunday of every month at Kinky Restaurant and Lounge, 5950 North 76th Street in Milwaukee. And... Um, yeah, man, shout out to Jay, Ram, my team, GA over there at Kinky, you know. Jeez. Yeah. In case y'all just now tapping in, man, we kicking it with promise, man. Y'all can talk in, you got some good, yeah. For fresh haircuts, fades, and shaves with a smile, contact Donnie D. Styles. Located inside Salon Solo at 6329 West Greenfield Avenue in beautiful West Dallas, Wisconsin. 
Book your haircut experience on the Cut app today or call 414-687-3940. Remember, for fresh haircuts, fades, and shaves with a smile, contact Donnie D Styles. See you soon. Yo, thanks for still tapping in at the commercial break, man. So we're kicking it with Promise. So uh, you just made me think about Cat Williams, man. Yeah. You said you had to go outside the doors. What do you think about this Cat Williams situation, man? Um, Virgo to Virgo, you know, yeah. to Virgo. If you I didn't. I didn't watch the entire interview. I mean, like most people. I mean, he been trending like crazy. So you know, we all seeing the clips and things like that. Um, I think Cat obviously is a talented comedian. He's put in the work over the years, and I learned in life you can't tell nobody how to feel. Right, regardless mm -hmm. if I agree with somebody or not, I can't tell somebody how to feel. So whatever experiences he's gone through in the industry, whatever things he may have seen, may have heard or dealt with these people, these are his thoughts and his views and his opinions, and I can't tell him how to feel. Yes, Lord. My biggest issue with it is just that, would the interview be doing numbers and trending like that if he wasn't using the names he was using? That's my only issue. Like, it's getting the traction it's getting because people love drama, people love to hear chaos. If Cat was doing an interview where he was just more so talking about his own journey and what he went through and what he experienced, not saying people wouldn't tune in, but it wouldn't be doing what it's doing where everybody's talking about it because, again, he's going at some of the biggest names in comedy and entertainment. And, again, whatever he went through and whatever is his – I don't even like saying a person's truth because I feel like this. It's, it ain't no your truth, my truth. It's the truth and it's false. Yeah. Like, I don't really get caught up in people saying I'm sharing my truth. I don't even know what the hell that means. But to me, <laughs> if that's the case, we all can say, like, this is true to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, But whatever he's believing, what he believes. So I'm not saying that the things he's talking about may not be true, but I also just feel like he had an intention with that interview. Yeah, he he walked in there and he mm -hmm. had an MO and he did exactly what he wanted yeah, he to executed do. executed too, man. Yeah. He gave me that communications bachelor's degree <laughs> answer. Y'all heard that? This, you hear the communication? So, all right, so check deal, man. I can't bear in gifts, man, because I know you on the radio, man. So I got to get you a shut up and hustle because you've been doing exactly this stuff. You've been, you been, you been hustling, man. Hustling, man. You gotta man. rock that. You gotta take some. I, I know you're a grinding person. No, but I, I got need you to take some pictures. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. So, additionally, the radio opens a lot of doors for you. Yeah. And, and your network is building. Like, it's, sure. it's, I see it. So, like, what what is this your network that you're building? What's the importance of that to you? You know. I mean, networking is key regardless of what you do. You know, whether it's a job, whether it's school, whether it's a neighborhood, or just whatever. Like, building relationships and having um, connections is important. Um, and whatever you're trying to do, you know, really you can't do anything alone. You can have a mindset, you can have a hustle, you can have a mentality, but um, in order to get to different places and get to different rooms, you're going to have to expand. You're going to have to be able to reach across the table. So being in radio, first and foremost, um, it helps me build my interviewing skills. You know what I'm saying? Like before I got into radio, I knew how to communicate, I knew how to talk to people, but I still had to learn how to interview. One of the biggest things I learned is that I have to allow I'm the I'm ears for this one. Hold on. <laughs> but one thing you will learn is like, yeah. you, and you're doing a great job of it today, but like you have to ask open-ended questions to where your guest is going to want to communicate. Because a lot of times people, you might just say like, you know, so you got a new album coming out, right? Yeah. Jeez. If an if a artist is not a very talkative person. That's so uncomfortable person, when that happens, Yeah, man. it's closed Ooh. off. So you got to find a way to ask about the things that maybe the audience wants to know. But try to find questions that are going to be fun or something that will open that person up to get them to want to be more personable. So for me, it's just about learning how to um, not necessarily take over a combo. Like sometimes when you interview people, I see interviews where a lot of times the guests are the, uh, is cutting people off or constantly interjecting with their life and what they got going on. If it's a back and forth, great. Otherwise, it's like who's interviewing who? It's like allow this person to be the guest and you lay the table out for them and you throw the alley oop and you let them dunk it. Yep. You don't gotta keep being in the highlight. Like you gotta know how to set the table and then let them let them feast. Yes, Lord. So that's one thing I learned in radio. But as far as this networking, like the work what I learned is that when you continue to put in work and you grind and you have a great work ethic and when you a solid person, you get to the point where you're not making phone calls and asking for things. Yes, Lord. People will start making phone calls and looking for you. And that's one thing that I've learned in this journey. I've been at this stuff for a while. And I remember when I was begging and asking just to be on the radio and I would work for free, trying to get interviews or trying to get relationships or trying to get into doors. 
And now the table has turned to where there's people who are reaching out to me now saying, hey, can you do this? Or this person wants to get in the room with you. Or So the, just the table turned. So yeah. I would just say. Like that, that convention you was at. Yeah. Yeah. Touch the touch on that convention, man, because that was that was, that was powerful, man. Um, See you up there suited and booted, man. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying. You took a lot from that, uh, and you, you know what I'm saying. You, yeah. you dropped some gems too, man. No, I just wanted like I got invited um, this past fall to do the United Negro College Funds Empower Me tour. Um, got thank to you, bro. God, bro. Like, you, man. Listen. So it was my second year getting invited back, and how they do it is it's a huge event they do around the country with different cities, and they came to Milwaukee again. And what they do is they uh, they give out some scholarship opportunities to to, to young uh, black students and NPS. Um, but it's not just black students there; they have different uh, multicultural students as well. But again, the United Negro College Fund wants to focus on you know black students as a priority. But um, what they do is they give out scholarships, then they have these breakout sessions where they focus on different issues that might impact girls, different things that might affect um, young boys, and then they have like collective things. So I was invited to be on a panel called uh, Guy Talk to speak to, to young men. And there was yeah. a couple hundred high school students in there. And, um, you That's know, just huge, being on that bro. panel, just speaking to them, the reason I was suiting the boot and when I went is I wanted them to see somebody who looked like them be dressed in a certain manner, but it ain't about going to court. I don't got a case. You know what I'm saying? I'm dressed in this suit because I want to be dressed in the suit. And again, I could have came with some J's on. I could have came, you know what I'm saying, fresh. Like, that's cool, but I wanted to show them it's different layers and that right. I'm still myself and I still can talk and look how I look, even if I have a suit on. Right. I just wanted them to see a different presentation. And also, we did something where we showed the young men how to tie ties. So I said, what better way to do it if I'm actually wearing a suit? Stop it, so, bro. Jeez, man. But I got some from them young men, too, to be yeah. honest. Like, some of the questions and things they asked me personally or some of the things that I was asked on the panel, like, it opened up my mind and my heart to be like, there's even more that I want to do as far as more community advocacy and being right. involved with doing Hold on, you serious? You trying to do more? Yeah, <laughs> man, I know it's wild, but yeah. Like, hold on, you play Sometimes sports like too, man. Enough, like, man. you play sports too, man? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm not doing, I know it sounds crazy, oh but sometimes God, I feel like I don't dude. be doing enough, bro. Like, I, I see different things, I'm inspired, and I'll be like, I need to be doing more. I need right. to be helping affect my community more. So right. as much as I love entertaining and, and having fun, I be feeling like it's another layer to me that people don't necessarily know about that. I really do care about the community. I really do want to make change. I really do want the city to be in a better space. Right. On top of that, so what's uh, what's the most exciting project that you're working on currently? Man, um, you got some shit on the flow, man. Yeah, it's, that's tough. Like right now, I got a lot of different things on the plate. Like, yeah. I mean. Um, I'm also involved with a nonprofit, so you know, shout out to Wausau, which is uh, Westside Arts Unlimited. I'm the uh, vice president for a nonprofit uh, called the New State, which yes, is in, uh, near West Side of Milwaukee, and we are renovating the space over there, which is going to be all ages. Um, We're going to be shaking club. up all day, bro. Because <laughs> listen, so, uh, yeah. So that I mean, I'm excited about that project because I've been involved with them for the past four or five years. I've been the VP for two years, and that project is about you know opening up this space. It's a, um, a three different um, a three different tier projects, three phases. The first phase is a, a, par a park that we opened up, which is still being worked on, but we did events last summer at the park. Um, the second phase is a cafe, which will be opening uh, this spring, hopefully uh, by May, Delaney's. And then the third part is the theater, which has a 400-seat theater for performance, recording studios, and an office for our nonprofit to help hope nurture and give opportunities to young people and people of all ages. So I'm excited about the possibilities of that project. Um, I took acting classes for the first time this past fall, Milwaukee Rep. I just got cast in my first movie. So I'm Good excited man. about that. Duh. And then um, <laughs> obviously continuing this comedy journey, man. Like I've been able to open up, you mentioned the improv a couple of times. Yeah. I've been able to rock the improv several times now. Yeah. Um, just a couple of weeks ago. Well, you, how far are you, how far do you, I didn't mean to cut Go you ahead. off. How far do you uh, plan on taking uh, Funny on Sundays? Um, man, it initially it was just a concept, right? I just, sometimes in life, you'll be presented opportunities, and then other times, if you don't have opportunities, you have to create them yourself. Right. So I know that mm. a lot of people in the city don't... Say that three times, boy. Man, I know a lot of people in the city, um, especially when I was first really doing it, didn't view me as a comedian or didn't even know I could do comedy. For instance, the homies who run Kinky, they didn't know. Yeah. When we talked about it, Jay is like... Um, 
one of the owners, he just thinking I'm a host because he know I got hosting skills. So he's right. like, oh, okay, you're going to book comedians and you're going to host the event. Cool. Oh, that first event. Trying to box you in right away. <laughs> not even that. He just, again, if yeah, you don't yeah. know, you don't yeah, know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He never, he's not aware. And that's part of my fault, right? I quietly was doing stand-up for months and wasn't telling people. Yeah. So unless you was coming to these shows, you don't know exactly what I'm on. Right. So when we do the first event and I go up there and I open up the show, but I'm doing five, six, seven minutes of jokes. After the night is over, they like, bro, like, we thought you was supposed to host. Like, you funny? <laughs> and like, what you on? So I understand that people who don't know that element of me aren't aware. So right. I get it. I wasn't going to be booked for comedy shows. Nobody was asking me to do stuff with comedy because, again, people didn't view me like that. Yeah, so yeah. I realized that, okay, Marlon gave me the, the, the love and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the battery in my back. Yeah. But I said I got to create my own. So I created Funny on Sunday first as an engine for myself to be able to get some work to get my legs under me because I knew people wouldn't be booking me. But then it was also an opportunity to give other comedians a platform, an opportunity to have somewhere to rock. And then people just need to laugh more. People need right. somewhere to go to feel comfortable and have a good time. So that was the concept. I mean, now we've done it, you know what I'm saying, from last spring through the fall, through the winter. So now I got that under my belt on how to plan an event, how to book comedians, how to MC it as well, yep. how to pay everybody. Like I'm involved in the whole aspect. So and then you building communities, man. You got your whole little too. bed of uh, we hear you flaming other comedians, man. You talking about <laughs> building a theater? God damn, man. We kicking it with promise, man. We be right back at this commercial break with our words at you. Y'all stay tuned. Yeah. Hello, you guys. My name is Miss Jordan. I'm the owner of Dimples and Smiles Family Daycare LLC, location one and two. I can be reached at Dimples and Smiles Family Daycare LLC on Facebook or 414-573-6010. I'm also hiring and accepting kids. In addition to that, I am the owner of Classy Hair, BJ's Bounce House, Right on Time Transportation Service, and Right on Time Mobile Notary Service. Reach me at any time. Thank you. Break. We're kicking it with promise. Where there ain't no threats in this room right now. It's just million dollar dreams, million dollar broke nigga nightmares. Now we got our uh, our word segment where we we pick your brain. It's, it's more personal words, you know. Okay. And you spin a wheel three times and you tell us what you think about these words. Okay. All right. Let's get your first spin real quick. Right. What we got, y'all? Studio. Studio. So you want me to just say what come to mind or? Yeah, yes, Lord. Um, man, studio, creativity. It's a space where it's just you, that microphone, and your thoughts. And That's it's crazy. like theater to mind. For me being in the studio, I mean, essentially, I talk to myself every single day on the radio. Even though I have an audience, even though there's people who are tuned in, first and foremost, it's me. Yeah. And I have to figure out how can I capture and engage these people? How can I? cut through whatever you got going on, whether you at work, you in the car, you driving, the words that I'm saying, I have to cut through. So when I'm on a microphone, I'm conscious of what I'm doing and what I'm saying, and it's the thought process behind it. Every time I'm on that mic, I want to entertain, but I also want to inspire and also want to inform. Right. So being in that studio just makes me think about being create, creative and using my voice as a platform and as a tool. I hit the brick wall with, what's, is there preparation involved with that? Like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. I mean, some of it is just, to be honest, man, I, I've been fortunate enough to be blessed to have some natural gifts, right? Mm -hmm. Certain things, I can't even tell a person right. because I just have certain things in me. Yeah. But as far as anybody who would want to do radio or do music or do television or comedy or whatever, preparation is truly important because if you want to do something, you take it serious, you're going to put in the work to yeah. be the best version of that. So preparation is key. Before I get on the radio, people don't know the night before, I'm prepping for that next morning. Yes, so it's not me just walking in there just doing a show. That night before, I've spent time to look at what's going on with local news, what's going on with current events, what's going on with entertainment, my topic or questions for the day, if I have a giveaway, if I'm doing tickets, what type of games I wanna play with the audience, like the weather, you know what I'm saying, if it's traffic issues, like I'm preparing to think about all those things that night before and that morning before I crack that mic. And then you might have a curveball, right? Life happens. Yeah. I might have an idea about doing one thing for the show. I might look at the news, might look on the gram, something is happening that needs yeah. to be talked about. Uh, I have twist. to pivot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So being prepared is important, but also knowing how to work on the fly. Right. And being in comedy, being in radio, being in media, I'm good at knowing how to adapt and how to adjust with things. Right. You've got sports and uh, 
cutting grass and <laughs> building baby houses. Kids. And baby <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get that second spin. They say it takes six sauces to be a millionaire, man. You damn close. Oh, man, that's easy for you. Fashion. Fact, oh man, um, I'm simple today. I'm blacked out because I got to do, uh, when I leave here, actually, we got to do a, a, a shoot, a photo shoot for the film. And they yeah. wanted us in all black, so I just figured it'd be easy to just keep it on. But fashion, man, I, I mean, I love sneakers. Um, I'm really into sneakers a lot. I love shoes. As far as fashion, like, I'm one of them type of dudes, I don't really do what everybody else do. I've never really been a person that's on trends. Yeah. So, like, I got some designer frames on right now, but, like, I'm really not a big, designer dude. I, if I rock it, it's because I want to rock it. Yes, if I Lord. wear it because I want to, not because I'm looking in the magazine, I'm looking on the gram, or I'm seeing what's trending. Yeah. So for me, just like, I like being fly. I like, you know, wearing dope clothes, but also like being comfortable and I like being myself. And another thing, I actually do have my own brand too, but, <laughs> but that's, that's, Hold on. that's you on the you cut grass, you babysit. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't mentioned that, but what's the name of the brand? Uh, Go ahead and take the time to shout that. The Fly Intellect. So it's, 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 I don't really talk about it a lot because I'm not really where I want to be with it. So I'm the type of person, I don't really like to talk about things. I'd rather do them or yes, speak Lord. on things when it's something in motion. See, but, that's why I got you that shirt right there. Yeah, I appreciate it. But Shut I up do, and hustle I do right, right there. Bread, yeah. yeah, for sure. But yeah, what is like you said, define intellect? The fly intellect. The fly intellect? Yeah, the fly okay, intellect. Short dope. for the fly intellectual. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. That's dope. All right, let's get that third spin. Right. Do that one slower. Oh, I hit well, reverse. Back spin, though, you? Relationships. Um, it's almost like networking. Relationships are key. You know, whatever type of um, relationship it is, it's important to have. Going back to what we talked about earlier, communication is important in any relationship. So, whether it's business, it's romantic, it's friendships, um, we have to all find better ways to communicate with each other. You know, and um, I see what you did there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but relationships are important, yeah. man. Like, um, and I and I I want to do a better job of, you know maintaining relationships because I am busy. I do got a lot of stuff going on. I still got to realize I'm somebody's son. I'm yeah. somebody's brother. I'm wow. somebody's friend. Like, yeah. I can't get so caught up in the things that I want to accomplish and achieve yeah. and lose the other aspects of life. So it is important to maintain those relationships for me to go by and chill with moms, for me to go sit with granny, you know what I'm saying? For me to find time to have dinner and kick it with the homies, for me to mingle and interact with women. Like, it's important to still have those aspects of my life to feel somewhat normal, if you will. Right. So it's trying to find a balance with everything. Yeah, because you clearly not normal. There you have it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, you normal, but you not. I know what you're saying. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, who had a word tell you with the boy Thomas, who just picked the brain, the promise. So um, let's, let's let's touch on this indie film and, and its acting classes. Man. Yeah. And that's, that's huge. That's yeah, huge. so um, I had no prior experience, like, doing any acting, um, with the exception of, like, you know, like in like um, in college, I took a theater course and I took a playwriting class. So I actually had wrote some stuff and, you know, did like a one man show for class, but never like formally like trying to act or do anything like that. Um, but it kind of was in the back of my head. Like even when I was a kid, I would have ideas for movies and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of always wanted to try it, but it was like a secondary or third thing. It was never my focus. So um, a couple years ago, I was thinking about taking an acting class, just Googling like if Milwaukee had acting classes. But again, it was on the back burner. My mm -hmm. little brother actually um, was doing some acting in school and I went to see him do a couple plays and like that was inspiring. Like little bro really had like locked in. He knew his lines, one of the plays he had to sing. And I'm just, and I never seen my little brother in this light. Mm -hmm. My little brother normally playing video games. He around the house lounging. I never seen him take anything that serious. So that was inspiring. So I was like, okay. So I was going to try to actually quietly enroll him in classes. I saw that the rep had some courses, so I was about to put the bread up and pay for him to go to class. Well, I found out you had to be 18 and up to do the classes. Jeez. Little bro couldn't do them. What better teacher but be? That, that gave me the thought to be like, well, maybe I should take the class. So what really pushed me, I did an interview with Bill Bellamy last year. And while talking to Bill, he's somebody I look at, again, a multi-layer guy. He used to host on MTV. He's act, he's done stand up, he's been in all these pockets. So I asked him, I said, Bill, when you first got in the game, like, what was it, what was what was your method? He said, Well, first I was doing stand up. He said, then I started taking acting classes, then I got the MTV gig. So after talking to him, I'm like, mm. so we talk a little bit off the air, and like he kind of encouraged, like, yeah, bro, you should look at that. So I enrolled in the acting classes. I took them from um, the end of summer into the fall, completed the first course, 
And I was like, okay, cool. And at the time, the writers and actors, you know, they was on strike. Yeah. So it wasn't Damn. nothing moving. So but was. in the back of my head, I was just like, at least let me kind of get the tools together. Mm-hmm. So now, obviously, that's over. And um, initially, I wasn't trying to get casted or do anything right away. I feel like I'm still learning. So I have another semester that I'm going to take this year. So I was just going to be ready to, like, go back to work. But what happened is, um, shout out to Black Shife. Uh, Black is an artist in the city. Hey, she's yeah. yeah it's, I but interviewed he, uh, him too, though. Yeah, 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 yeah shout out to Black. Well, shout he, out um, Black Shot, boy. he's um involved in this movie project, and initially he had called me like, "Oh, P, um, I got this 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 small like role for you, like just like a cameo type, like come and do this scene." I'm nice. like, "Okay, cool." But then over a conversation, he was like, "Wait a minute, bro, you took acting classes?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah." He like, "No, no, no, we might have to find a." It seemed like don't nobody believe what the hell you got going on. Like, wait, bro, you write jokes? Yeah. Bro, you taking acting classes? Right. Like, yeah. But bro, also, but, think about it yeah. though. A lot of comedians parlay into acting. Yeah. So once I started taking comedy serious, I was like, well, it, it makes mm. sense to do the acting. So he was like, "Hold on, bro, no, we might have to find something else for you." Being so, on radio, you can promote yourself. So long story short, I go for uh, one of the uh, the table reads, yeah. and I'm there. The director's there. We kind of talking or whatever, and I end up getting offered a different role than what initially I went for. I was just only supposed to do the small role. I end up getting offered a, a not a huge role, but a role that had more parts, more yeah. scenes. And the writer and she was just like, "Do you think you can handle this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, for sure." So at the time, Black was like, "He like, man, that character." That's so far from who he is. And I said, that's the point, bro. It's yeah. acting. I said, yeah. it's not about be me myself. being who that person is. I have to, that's a challenge. Let me tap in and be, because this character, when people do see this film, if anybody who knows me personally, it's going to be a complete contrast from who I am. And just anybody who knows me professionally, yeah. it's going to be a, a stretch from who I am. But I accepted the challenge to tap in and be this person. You know what I'm saying? And this is a, a, dark, a darker person. This huge, man. This huge, man. Hey, we kicking it with promise, man. Like, bro, like, brain fried. <laughs> brain fried, man. I, I expected nothing but the less, though. But, um, so, where do you see yourself? What, what you got? Well, obviously, you got the, the film. But, like, what else going on for 2024? Yeah, man. So, um, the movie is the first thing that we'll do. We'll start shooting, really, in a couple of weeks. So, that's going to have me, you know, tied up schedule-wise doing that. Um, Getting back in the lab with the comedy, um, like I said, I just performed a couple weeks ago at the Improv. That was a blessing to get a chance to open up there again. Shout out to George Wilborn for that opportunity. Um, so obviously getting back on stage is important. Um, there's something I'm looking at doing uh, this year is traveling more with the comedy. You know, right. I've already first got up under Marlin, being comfortable there, putting myself in different pockets. I've now did multiple venues around the city. I've now been booked to do comedy, you know, which is crazy. Like I'm like, damn, people Jeez. booking me to do comedy which is still wild to me. Yeah. I've created my own platform, so now I'm like, okay, cool. I done did things in Milwaukee. Now I'm like, I need to go around different parts of Wisconsin. I need to hit Madison. I need to hit Kenosha. I need to hit Racine. Hell, Sheboygan, Green Bay. Like, I need to hit different parts of Wisconsin to see if this can travel. Then I need to hit the shy. Yes, I need Lord. to hit Minneapolis. I need to hit Atlanta. Like, I'm like, I need to get in different cities in different pockets. So I'm definitely looking at expanding and traveling more this year to do more comedy, to put myself in different scenarios and situations. Um, so that's what the movie and the comedy thing. I do want to, like I said, take that second semester acting classes. I don't feel like I'm Denzel yet, you know, so I definitely want to go back to the lab and work on that. Um, I do want to try to uh, audition for some other parts and other opportunities in the future. Obviously, the radio show is important, so I want to continue to grow and expand with the show, um, do more interviews, um, be more involved in the community. I got some stuff in my back pocket as far as community ideas and things I want to do in addition to what I'm doing with the nonprofit. So. I definitely want to plan and put together some events and do some things where I can give back. Um, and then, uh, I mean, you mentioned sports. People may not know, but like, I, uh, <laughs> I play flag football. Like, yeah, seriously, I was competitive. Say, man. How that bicep do it, man? Hey, we good, man. I just went to the gym the other day with no restrictions, which is a blessing. That's so, what's happening. That's what's happening. Yeah, so we'll see how that season go. Um, we, we, we'll get back in the spring, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, definitely be back on the field for football. And then, it's something I don't want to say it yet, because again, I don't like speaking on stuff until it's concrete, but I got something that just came through the pipeline this week. And um Tell best of the best first, man. Let us know. Man. Yeah, like it's 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 it's, it's a new gig. Um it's, it's some it's something big for the city. That's um, what's happening. But the, the ink ain't dry yet on the contract. Yeah. <laughs> so Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not say it yet. Oh, say, but I it. just say this, yeah. you the first to it's know that flow. I I'm gonna be doing something in the city of Milwaukee where a lot of people in the city pull up at this space 
You know what I'm saying? It's going to be another opportunity for me to expand my brand and be on a microphone to connect with people. Um, but again, I just can't talk on it yet because the contract ain't final. I accept but, the invite, bro. Yeah. Appreciate you, but bro. I, but I did just accept, I verbally <laughs> accepted the offer yeah. for a new opportunity yeah, in Milwaukee. You verbally, verbally uh, yeah. invited me to the event, too. Right? Oh, yeah. No, listen, <laughs> listen, everybody in the city going to be yes, able to up to this. Yeah. All right, roger that. Roger that, man. So, man, it's good, man. You get, get your last minute shout outs, man. Let, let everybody know. like. Man, shout out to you, bro. Thank you for having me on this platform. Um, salute to what you're doing, man. Um, I see you have my man uh, X on here, Xavier. Yes, Lord. You know what I'm saying from uh, Spearhead. Yeah. And uh, what you what you brothers are doing is important because, like I told him when I said on his platform, in this world it's, it's not easy for sometimes people to offer up a platform to let another person express and share what they got going on. Right. A lot of times in this world we me 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 me, mm -hmm. and that's why I said sometimes even with myself I have to get out of my own way right. because I feel like I don't be one to talk about always the things that I'm doing. I don't always want to share what I'm doing. So the fact that you brothers are opening up a platform to people to allow them to come and speak about what they're doing, you highlight people you think are doing dope things in the city, I want to salute you and commend you because man, you're thanks, creating man. an avenue and a platform. I ain't for, good at taking compliments, man. No, what I no listen, <laughs> I we got to give each other our flowers because I appreciate that, dog. I'm looking at what you're doing now, yes. and I can imagine what you're going to do when you continue to grow this platform, you know what I'm saying, and inviting yeah. somebody into the space and allowing them to speak on what they're doing. So I want to salute you to what you got going on and want to say much success to you with this platform. Bless you, um, bro. But, uh, man, shout out to my assistant, Kennedy. She's been with me um, now since last she spring. She in the back. And, um, you know what I'm saying, I appreciate her. Shout out to moms, my family, my High 1057 fam. You know what I'm saying? Um, just shout out to the whole city of Milwaukee, man. Like, when I do what I do, I'm always representing myself, but I'm always trying to represent the city and put us in a different light as well. All them blessings, man. Y'all, hey, tell them where to find you. You ain't hard to find, man, but tell them where to find you at. <laughs> man, I'm probably the most anti-social social media person, to be honest, bro. <laughs> you could have like, fooled me, bro. I feel like I'm the, uh, what's the thing, uh, back in the day, uh, Three Six Mafia had that album, The Most Known Unknown. That's how I feel, bro. I'm like the most known unknown person. Like, you know me, but you don't know me. And I ain't never offended when somebody don't know who I am or don't know what I do. Right. I'm cool. Because a lot of people know what my voice may sound like, but they don't know what I look like. So. Yeah. Like, I don't take none of that offenses, bro. Like, I just want to keep working, man. To me, it's not even about accolades or attention. Yes, Lord. When I'm done, I just want people to be able to know I was a dope person. I had love. I had passion. And that I put in the work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But on Instagram, man, promise, I promise. On IG, uh, Facebook, promise, promise. Um, I'm about to revamp this Instagram. I mean, uh, revamp this YouTube channel. But right now, Morning Grind Promise is where you can watch all the interviews that I do that you might miss on the air. Morning Grind Promise on YouTube. But, um, flaming these comedians, man. Man, listen, say, where your turtle shell at? Man, man? listen, <laughs> shout out to Donnell Rollins, man. That man started with me, bro. But Donnell, listen, before we go, that, that dude gave me a hell of an opportunity, honestly, mm. um, that I, I could never repay. Yeah. Um, that was my first time ever performing at the improv when he gave me that chance to come and open for him. And originally, I was only supposed to do the first night. And after that first night, he asked me to do the rest of the weekend. So I did five sold out shows for him in three nights. And it went from us ribbing and roasting each other in that interview to me having his personal number, to me taking him out to eat, us going to George Webb, us going to Casablanca, us going to uh, G's Clippers, got the smoke shop outside of Brownstone, upstairs Brownstone, us going there together and just breaking bread and having a conversation and kicking it with him and his team to where when he came back this fall to uh, do the show with Dave at Pfizer, him inviting me and my mother down and giving us floor seats and then me getting a chance to meet Dave Chappelle. So, nigga, you met Dave Chappelle. I met Dave Chappelle, bro. So, Donnell Rollins provided me a great <laughs> opportunity, bro. And like I said, and that really gave me my confidence to be honest, because I felt I was funny. Yeah. But when you gotta make a room full of strangers laugh, that's one thing. Yes. Yeah, when right. you have to impress seasoned veterans, right? Because when he put me on that stage, not only do I have to make the room laugh, but in the back of my head, I'm like, this dude has to see me. Yeah. And if he don't think I'm funny, it's like, well, why did I give him this opportunity? Or even not funny, because everybody's humor is different to people. Yeah. But just I know I couldn't freeze up in that moment. I yeah. had to do what I had to do. So once I did that show and I rocked five with him in three nights, at that point, I'm like, OK, like you could really do this. And yeah. then when I just did a couple weeks ago, the improv again with George Woodborn, and he gave me the opportunity to open. And when I rocked that and I got off the stage and he was like, yo, like, good shit, bro. You got some good jokes. So those things, not that I need the validation, but that just lets me know, like, OK, I'm on the right path. When these OGs in comedy who are veterans who've done amazing things, they've done Shaq All-Star Comedy, they've been on Def Jam, they've yeah. done all these different things. 
and they see something in me. Same with Marlon Hill. And he they give you affirmations and all kinds. Yeah, kind of, like, that huge. let me know I'm on the right path. Yeah, so. you are, man. For you sure. are, man. Well, again, thanks for coming to the show, man. You <laughs> are the best of the best, man. You are on the show for a reason, man. We are on Roku in front of potentially millions of people this episode. We'll be on there. Y'all make sure y'all go download the app, The A&R. That's capital T-H-E, capital A, lowercase A-N-D, uppercase R. So y'all make sure y'all go tap in with that. Y'all also go check out bestofthebesttv.com. We got our singers, songwriters, and producers showcase. So that's huge, man. We rock it with Promise, where it's not a threat. It's a promise. I love that slogan, though. That's crazy. You said uh, that uh, people didn't know who your, know your face, but we know that slogan, bro. That's yeah, people come to me and say it. That's crazy, <laughs> crazy bro. But again, we picked the brain of the Promise, man. Again, thanks for coming to, coming to the show, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Y'all already know what time it is. Your boy, Sir Quinn, from bestofthebesttv.com. And shh, shut up and hustle. We out. Shut up and hustle. Shut up and hustle. I tell them I serve. Shut up and hustle.